So when you think of an atom, I don't want you to think of an atom as kind of like planets around the sun. That's kind of your junior high version of what an atom looks like. What we're going to show you today is a more accurate depiction of what an atom really looks like. So our best guess of what an atom looks like today is that we have the nucleus in the center, which is made up of protons and neutrons. And then the electrons don't move around the nucleus like planets around the sun in rings. Instead, the electrons are in what we call electron clouds. When we look at pictures like this of an atom, it kind of makes it seem like the atom is flat, that it's only two-dimensional. And atoms are really 3D objects. And so what it looks like instead, it's not nucleus in the center and then planets around the sun, um, but it's almost more like a jelly donut where the jelly is the nucleus and then the donut is on all sides of the jelly, right? It's on every left, right, top, bottom. Uh, and that would be where the electrons are in some kind of three-dimensional space around the nucleus. So we have uh, energy levels, which sometimes you might see called N as the symbol we use to represent energy levels. Then energy levels just tell you how close you are to the nucleus. So are you in a cloud that's very close to the nucleus? If so, you're probably in energy level one or two. If you're in a cloud that's very far away from the nucleus, maybe you're in energy level six or seven. Orbitals are another name that we use for electron clouds. So just like how you might look at up in the sky and see a cloud and you'd say, you know what, that cloud kind of looks like a house. That one kind of looks like a dog. Um, scientists have noticed that electron clouds come in very specific shapes and they have different letters that they associate with them. So this first one, an S-shaped cloud, looks like a sphere. And no matter how you look at a sphere, it kind of looks the same on all sides, right? So that's why for that S-shaped cloud, there's only one of them. Then they've discovered something called P-shaped clouds. P-shaped clouds kind of look a little bit like a dumbbell, almost like a number eight. Um, if you take that number eight and you turn it on its side, it looks a little bit like an infinity sign, or you can have it three-dimensionally sticking out at your iPad screen at you. There's something called D-shaped clouds, which kind of look a little bit like a bloated letter X. And though there's five different types of D-shaped clouds, and then there's F-shaped clouds, which are really complicated, and there's um, seven different types of F-shaped clouds. So what we're going to look at today is where are the electrons in these orbitals? Where do they go? So the electrons can go anywhere they want to in this space. So um, kind of something like the electron kind of zipping around inside here. So it's not like planets around the sun like this, but instead it just kind of zips around wherever it wants to in that space. Or this guy, it doesn't go planets around the sun, but it can kind of just zip back and forth from one side of that electron cloud to the other, right? Kind of zip back and forth. The electron could be anywhere in that space during that time. there's something called the Pauli exclusion principle. And what the Pauli exclusion principle says is that each orbital 
each electron cloud that you see up above can hold two electrons maximum. That's it. Then it's full, it, it runs out of space. And so what that means is, if I go back, um, it says in this chart, how many different orientations of this orbital are possible for this S, P, D, and F? So in other words, if I look at how many S kind of clouds there are, there's only one green S cloud there. There's three different kinds of P clouds, that kind of magenta color. There's five different kinds of D clouds, those blue ones. And then there's seven different kinds of F clouds. So I'm gonna write those numbers here. One, three, five, seven. Well, if each one of those clouds can hold up to two electrons maximum, what that means is I could put two electrons into this S cloud, let's say. There's one, there's one. And then it fills up. You can't fit any more electrons into that orbital. You can't fit any more electrons into that electron cloud. In these P-shaped clouds, this whole thing is considered a cloud. The top and bottom are not separate, two clouds. It's one big cloud. So we could fit like two electrons in this guy. Or we could fit two in this guy. Maybe they're both in the same side, right? or they can be spread out. But you could fit two into each of those cloud shapes. So if we could fit two into the S's, then that means the most that can fit in an S-shaped cloud are two. Then if you look at the P-shaped clouds, there's three different orientations of them. So we could fit up to six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. If each cloud can hold two. This guy could hold six. This guy can hold ten. Two in each of those five clouds. And then this guy, fourteen.